Hi, it's 22 six. I've set up the room, there's 36 chairs there, I need four or five more. This is the plan for the shot, for the interview situation. Let's see how this works. I'm fucking sweating. DOD will be in in minutes. All right. Hi, my name is Dave O'Dwyer and I just got off stage from the comedy uh, showcase from the workshop I did with Kieran McManaman. You're our only American. <laughs> yeah, I'm your only American. Yeah. yeah. Is that a good thing? <laughs> it can be a good thing. It's a. It was a, like for this particular group, um, we had a pretty kind of diverse within people within Ireland, and there was Ruth who is from England. So we had a little. I was able to add that kind of foreign element to it, and because I've done his workshop in the past, I kind of knew a bit of the process. So it was really a nice, good collaborative effort. Um, you're nearly exotic in this group, then. You yeah, there. yeah. Was, it, when you're exotic with a name like Dave O'Dwyer in yeah. Ireland, it's kind of it, it's, that's something. Um, how was the audience tonight? Oh, very good. It was a very warm, welcoming audience. Um, you know, it is always a little nerve-wracking going on first, yet um, I got really good response. Everyone seemed to be really enjoying it. There was no, like, it was, it, it felt like a really good set. I definitely know I missed a few jokes in there, but that always happens. But I felt like it flowed, and particularly even when Kieran's phone went off, I was able to address that and, like, not throw me off and keep me on point and still keep within like the time frame of the of the set. Do you think Karen was just trying to challenge you by taking a phone call in the middle of your set? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. I think it was also just happened to be happenstance. Like you have to learn how to deal with hecklers or Will Smith's coming up to smack you. It's like uh, is it is is comedy different in Ireland than it is to America? Do you get away with more or less? Um, I would say I would say it's different in its delivery and kind of style a little bit. Um, it seems Irish humor from the way I kind of see it. It's a less uh, American humor is like set up and punch, kind of like really jokey, like pop, 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 and like uh, Irish and British humor is kind of like look how depressed I am and see and then <laughs> find the humor in the depression kind of thing. Um, it's just a different kind of style, it, but they're all they're all both equally funny. And does it help to know? What to expect with the audience if the if it's going to be big numbers if you know your audience if if you're going to deliver some some horrible dad jokes or if they're going to be lighthearted and fun. Yeah, I mean, I try to play with the crowd like because I know there was I heard there was a few Mexicans and I had a few Mexican jokes, but I was like, you know what, they hadn't been called out yet, so it's like, okay, I'm not going to do that. I try to make my comedy appeal to so it doesn't just appeal to locals, so it's broad enough that everyone kind of can get in on it. Um, so it so it's a lot of it's kind of self-deprecating or kind of funny things that I notice. You said this is your first gig since since pre. pre so yes, yeah, since, since before the before the yeah. So it, the, yeah, before the uh, the what do we call the the time long ago? Yeah. <laughs> In the before PC, times. Like, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. In the before pandemic times. Yeah. So it's been really nice. Like I didn't know if I would get back into comedy once things opened up again. And I was so grateful that Karen reached out to me. Let me know that there was a spot available and um, I would recommend to anyone to do the workshop as well. It's uh, an amazing, not just for comedy, but just to practice your public speaking, uh, your ability to, th to expand your thought process and to really kind of think about what you speak and how to, to, to deliver not just a joke, but any information. And did the showcase tonight help dust off the cobwebs? You're ready to go again? Yeah, I'm ready to go. It is, it's, it's definitely addicting. Um, like Coca-Cola, which is not sponsoring this, by the way. Uh, Coca-Cola, you know, don't like the taste, but love the smell. I'm not getting sponsorship. <laughs> uh, well, well done tonight, and hopefully we will see you soon, and there's no other pandemics. Right, yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shanann Higgins, and I've just come off stage from the Utah Funny. And yeah, great show so far, so. How did it go? Yeah, really, really well. Uh, the audience are in good form, so it's always a help. Um, you, this is your second time in the workshop, is it? Yeah, I've yeah, I've been in the workshop again. And the first one you did the online it was during. COVID. Yeah, it was, was mostly online, right? so it was a little bit different. So I, it was a different experience then to come back and do it a different time. Yeah. Uh, is it better, or worse? What what was the difference with with the online and to in person? Uh, well, it was really it, it, like. The, it went really well when it was online, but I think it's kind of more personal than when you're when you're in there and you can kind of build up more camaraderie and help each other a little bit more with with when you're writing the, the sort of so things, working so. with a group it helped yeah definitely you can kind of bounce ideas off everybody and everyone kind of helps and supports if they have 
if they have something they don't, they think will work for your set. So it's really really good that way. And did you was it new material this time, Ryan? Did you write new yes. material? Yes. Um, as a thirty nine year old woman, I mostly talk about how uh, my eggs are going stale and how I'm single and how I can't afford my house. So this time I wanted to talk about other things that weren't involving my ovaries. So uh, <laughs> so I wrote all the material about my torture as um, a student in school. So that was uh, just something a little bit different. Um, you were on second tonight. Did you did you feel prepared to go on in front of Because it's a big crowd out there. Um, as a teacher, you would think that I would be the first person to do their homework. Oh, unfortunately, I I'm not that person and I didn't have my homework done but um, you know when you write it you're reading it over so much that it actually doesn't take much then to kind of know it really so it's probably that hour beforehand where you're really kind of nailing the correct sentences but other than that yeah no I was, I was um, really happy. When, when you did the online did you actually do a, a workshop or a showcase then online as well and there was like no, a No Zoom... I was lucky enough that was kind of when everything was opening up so we had our lessons on, um, online and then we came in on the day before and we practiced in here and on shot and then we did our, our, our performance the next day so it worked really well. How many gigs have you done now? Mm, I'm actually not sure now because I started my illustrious um, career in comedy in Myanmar so um, and that was quite a few years ago and then I came back and I was doing different things so and then when I was just about ready to start again, COVID hit, so <laughs> that didn't really work out that well, so no, so, I'm back. <laughs> you're no longer rusty, you've dusted off the cobwebs tonight. Yes, and, and I'm flat out writing until I, I want to have a, an hour ready just in case Netflix calls me, so. Um, was there anything surprised you tonight, anything that you thought was going to go really well and it didn't, or anything that you weren't really sure if it was funny and they've laughed their asses off? Yes, well I was actually pleasantly surprised that they were quite engaging and laughed at all of my jokes, which you know, Expect them to laugh at one or two, but you know, to laugh at all of them is pretty good. <laughs> they can't go wrong. They're a very friendly audience, so it's all good. So, what's next? More material and more gigs? Yes, I am. Um, I'll be performing in Bray on the 8th, and I'll actually be back in here on the 12th of June, and I have some gigs in Loud, and I'm trying to get around different counties around Ireland as well. So. Ah, you're touring. Um, <laughs> I'm a primary school teacher, so you know, I have July and August off. I'm, You've I'm, done summer. I'm no way off then, I just jump in the jump in the, in, in the camera and uh, <laughs> would head you off. Would you recommend the course to anyone thinking about doing comedy? Anyone, you know, fresh out the block, off the blocks, brand yeah. new? Absolutely. Um, I'd highly recommend the course. Um, it seems like a really scary thing. Um, the first time I did comedy, I was kind of tricked into it. So sometimes I th feel like you need to be kind of tricked into doing it because otherwise it seems like it's a big, scary thing. But when you do the course, uh, Kieran breaks it down so neatly and kind of explains how it's done and he works with you so um even if you are a bit nervous on the night you will always know that you've have a good material getting up on the stage because you know we all work together and help each other on that so um even if you're not funny you'd get away with doing this it'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> well you did more than tonight you did very well thank Thanks you very, very much. much appreciate it thank you Hi, I'm Eamon O'Brien. I've just come off the stage with Kieran. We've just done stand-up and oh my god, it is terrifying but great crack. Thank God we plied these folks with lots of drink. They laughed at all the place they shouldn't, at all the place they shouldn't, should have and shouldn't have. Fantastic. Thanks a million. Uh, Eamon, you're a professional speaker. I am, yeah. Is that cheating a little bit? Were you already no, prepared to go? Nobody ever tells jokes. I'll tell you something, professional speakers are the world's worst at telling jokes. So t my only goal tonight was to be less shit than the average pub professional speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. So you did that all right? Yeah, well, I think we're okay, yeah. And is there anything that you maybe learned from the course that you could use in your actual career or are you going to forget everything as soon as you go the door. You learn, anybody who does comedy, you have to give serious respect because it takes so long to just create a minute's worth of stuff. So absolute hat off kudos to anybody who gives it a go. Give it a go instantly, folks. It's great crack and you'll only be a wee bit terrified, but you lose about a stone in weight. Which is harder, comedy or public speaking or both? Oh, comedy is way harder than public speaking. Anybody can do public speaking. <laughs> comedy, you actually have to remember stuff. No, public speaking, much, much easier. 
Is this is this your first time as a your first comedy gig or have you done it? First before? comedy gig. I've never done comedy before, ever. And why? Why did you decide to do uh, this? Because uh, I just thought, wouldn't it be a bit of crack just to try this for one time? And if I die on my ass, I'm not inviting anybody here. I'll never. It'll never speak about it again. We'll just draw a veil over this. And are you going to? Or are you going again? I have to go again. <laughs> you can't be a little bit pregnant. <laughs> So you're addicted now, you have the book. Oh, well, I don't know whether I'm addicted, but I'm going to give it another go. So listen, what could possibly go wrong? Well, this is true. Um, and is there anything uh, that you thought would have worked really well tonight and didn't? Or were you were you prepared? Did you know your stuff going on? I think just plying everybody with drink before was a great idea. They laughed at stuff they should never have laughed at. I was thinking, this is a total pub. <laughs> if you wait long enough, somebody's going to laugh. I'm worried now you'll get up to do your public speaking and start cracking jokes at the next I know. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I it'll, only do stories, yeah. It'll cross over yeah. in the back I only do stories, yeah. <laughs> well, well done tonight and um, best of luck. Hopefully we'll see you doing another game Thanks soon. Thanks a million. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Hello, I'm Ruth. Uh, I've just come off stage and I'm probably a bit flushed from all the excitement. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really good. It feels like a big rush from having done it. Are you still buzzing? Yeah. Literally just walked off and yeah. the audience were really good. Yeah, they were. I think they were. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounded really like it went down really well. Yeah. Everyone was laughing and yeah, they um they seemed to really enjoy it. Yeah. Um you're you're pretty you've done a lot of gigs. Uh you, I've done like maybe four like three years ago. Right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then a long break for the reason one of us will mention. Um how does it feel being out there again? Are you is it like riding a bike? Um Yeah, sort of. Yeah, it's really fun. It's just yeah, it's nice. Um no, you, you, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not being very oh, articulate. Right, don't worry, don't worry. You um, yeah. So, um, yes, you, uh, at your English, definitely yeah, just point that out to you. How were the audience to you for that? Were they nice? What's that? Being because English? being English, were they kind to you? Um, they were, and um, you know what? I, my friend is in the audience, and he's constantly been telling me to just embrace it and do a whole load of jokes about like how shit the English are. So, <laughs> did <laughs> so that I work? Did for a few you? of them, so yeah, so it was good. Um, um, and did you do the workshop this time around? Yeah. And were you writing new material? Yeah, it's all completely new. And did it feel like you were starting again then? Yes, totally. <laughs> um, where did you get it? How do you, you come up with your material? Where do you get it from? Uh, like, honestly, I got it from like the five minute break when I had to like walk from here down to Tesco <laughs> to get my sandwich. <laughs> I knew that I was going to have to do something when I came back. So it was like the pressure of being trying to do um, Do you think, did the workshop help you prepare, get it all together in, in that you could put it in a couple of, like seven minutes slot? Or? Yes, yeah, massively. Yeah, and I think I understand a lot more about like how to put a set together and um, how to kind of build things and thread them through and stuff. So, yeah. Do you, do you learn how to make the audience like you? Because it definitely seemed to work out there. <laughs> did it? I don't know. <laughs> Everyone keeps telling me people don't like me because I'm a lawyer and I'm English. Well, he um, did say, he was like, oh, she's English, she's English. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. As you say, you've embraced it, so. Yeah. Well, I'm technically Irish as well. My mum's Irish, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a bit of Scottish. You're hybrid. Yeah. You're yeah. all right. <laughs> you yeah. get to work that. You, uh, you, had a lot of, you knew a few people in the audience tonight. Um, yeah, I had like a couple of friends came who did the comedy course that I did years ago and um, then just a friend from walking up to him and being like, will you be my friend? Will like, <laughs> you be my friend? Yeah. Um, do you think, is it scarier if you know people out there or is it more welcome when you see faces, you know? Or did you even notice when you were up? I did notice. It was quite good actually, because I thought I've done a gig here. This was like the last gig that I did was in in here, but the, the light was so blinding that you couldn't actually see the audience apart from the front row. Whereas today, like you could see everyone all the way back, which was really nice. Um, uh, so yeah, it kind of helped because I knew like Killian was the one who was like on at me to do jokes about the English. So when I did <laughs> them, I was pointing at him. Kind of thing. And what would you say to anyone who's thinking of doing comedy? Do it. No hesitation. Don't Absolutely. be scared. Yeah. No, it's brilliant. I yeah. want to get to the point where I can be less prepared and just get up on stage and like flow a bit more. Like I, I'm the kind of person that has to prepare loads and loads and loads, but 
I'd love to be able to just be like, hey, I've got an idea and try it. Um, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but the more you do, the easier that's going to come to you. Yeah, and, and like like that, the workshops do help because you build through that. Yeah. Um, well, well done tonight. I won't keep you any longer because you've done it for a yeah, glass of wine. <laughs> Hi, I'm Patrick McLaughlin. You've just come off stage. How was it? It was great. It was very enjoyable. You're a seasoned pro at this stage now. Well, I have a few under my belt, so, uh, but it never. You can never take it for granted. Uh, have you seen the other acts on so far this evening? I have. And what yeah. do you think of the standard? Good, good, very good. I mean, it's all about practice <laughs> and, you know, honing in on your own voice and finding that and working that. I mean, I'm talking now like a very seasoned pro. I was going to but, say, yeah. uh, I'm not a very seasoned pro, but I do know that. I recognize that. Um, and have you, you did the workshop pre-pandemic, is that right? I did. I actually had a gig in Battle of the Axe way back in December of 2018 or so. And then I took the... Uh, workshop straight after that January 2019 or so and have you developed since there have you kind of found your own style are you still working on it oh still working at it I mean I enjoy it what a kick to any evening if you know you're on so like one of the acts said earlier I need to what she said she turned 40 so she needed to spike things up so there's nothing like this to do that. And uh, so what do you think of Kieran as a teacher then from the... I think he's a great teacher and I think it's the time that he invests in his students that is what's great about him and the atmosphere that he creates in a room. I mean, he really gives it everything. And have you been able to use his his teaching, his, his tips and pointers out in the real world. I refer to it all world. the time. He gave me a pamphlet or handout at the very beginning. And he talks of various students who've come through his course, who've gone on to great things. And I look at uh, what he said about them, what they were like at the outset and where they are now. And yeah, all the time I look at it. So are you saying what Kieran says and does, does actually make sense then? It makes sense if you read it. I mean, it makes more sense once you've been up and you know what it's like to be up there. It makes more sense. Um, and so has the ex experience changed uh, um, now when you go on stage? Are the nerves gone? No, they're not gone and I don't think they ever will, nor would I like them to go because one of the great thrills is the sheer relief afterwards. So if you're not nervous beforehand, there's no relief afterwards. What would you say to anyone thinking about doing comedy? I'd say... <laughs> I'd say do it. I'd say try it. It mightn't be for you. It mightn't be for me. I'd say the only way you can find that out is by doing it. And do you think that the likes of the workshop helps for so a newcomer trying to develop their own kind of style? So. Definitely, because if you don't take the workshop, you're not schooled in any way and you have an impression of what stand-up is, but the likelihood that it's a fit for when you go on stage, it's slim to none. When you have this background, when you have the lessons learned from the workshop, you're streets ahead. So because you know how hard it is, you know it's difficult, it's not easy to make people laugh and it's about gags per minute, it's not about storytelling, it's not about sitting in a bar and being funny with your friends, it's totally separate from that. Yeah. It's entertain me. These people who think they can wing it and then go up and die. Exactly that. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Have you seen it happen in any of your gigs? Uh, well, my very first one, Kieran said to me, and it was at the Battle of the Axe, he said to me, you got away with it. And I did get away with it because it was a friendly crowd and it was storytelling from me, long-winded stories with a gag at the end, uh, more humorous stories and it's really not what comedy's about, it's, it's, it's just not, it's not about you know, wandering aimlessly telling stories. Jokes, entertain me, be funny. Your daughter's here tonight, does she find you funny? Oh, you'll have to ask her. Um, she tolerates me. <laughs> well, as long as it's not too many dad jokes. No, 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 no. Well done. Thanks for Thank um, doing a great gig tonight. Bye.